Welcome back to Juice's Arthropods. This is Juice, and today we'll be doing our species spotlight on the pink dragon millipede. The pink dragon millipede is one of the most annoying common named I've ever heard of when it comes to names. The reason for that is there are two major what could be convinced as pink dragon millipede. There's Desmoxix planata, which is the one that you will see in this video. It is unfortunately commonly mistaken for purposia. Now, a lot of the issue with this is due to the fact that the import sellers are selling them all as general pink dragon millipedes. When, in, ironically, the actual common name, I know common names are trash, um, for the uh, purposia is actually shocking pink dragon millipedes. So this is actually really important because you will notice in the video here, these are the ones that are being sold as pink dragon millipedes, but um, they're purple. So I don't know what to tell you. However, no matter how much I try, no one will listen to me. So I'm just going to continue to call it a pink dragon millipede because, hey, you know what? Three's a crab. Anyhow, as far as primary food source goes, they are detritivores, which means primary food source is rotting leaves, um, rotten wood, and obviously other decaying. But as you can see in this video, they love themselves some rotting vegetables. Um, don't mind all the mold in the cage. This is by design, as they tend to do very well in high humidity requirements, which we'll discuss in a care guide in the future. Um, but a little bit of mold killed nobody, and there's enough springtails in there that I'm not worried about it. So they seem to thrive in this type of habitat. So if you're the type of person that doesn't like a little bit of mold, don't buy millipedes. For the country of origin and the climate required for these, um, they, due to humans, were originally only in the Myanmar, Malaysia, Thailand, and Sri Lanka areas, um, but they have spread exponentially. These guys breed very quickly, which is actually one benefit and one con of them, but we'll discuss in a different day. Um, level of care for them, uh, well, actually, because of the country of origin, humidity needs are, they need to be very, very high. Like, wet is fine. Um, so just keep that in mind. Do not dry them out like you might some other species where you have one half be a dry Side. these guys do need quite a bit of uh, dampness due to the region they're from for level of care it is intermediate just because of that humidity needs um, and they're uh, kind of exorbitantly expensive for how frail they are they're not long-lived either um, the benefit though is that you will have a boatload of them if you do it correctly and what do I love about them they are so creepy when it comes to millipedes um, they are not like any other millipede I've ever seen. They have this very centipede look to them that is, uh, is actually really cool without all the toxic cognats and horrible things that centipedes are capable of doing. Um, they're beautiful colors, uh, you know, with anything. If it's that bright, there's a reason. And the reason for that is they actually have a bit of um, the ability to create hydrogen cyanide. So they will have a very strong almond smell. Uh, do not eat these and um, probably shouldn't even handle them. But if you do choose to, I would recommend gloves or wash the hell out of your hands afterwards. Hope you liked this video. Like and subscribe.